Joining us now is Stacey Abrams, the Democratic candidate for governor of Georgia, who is in the final leg of her campaign right in these very hours. Stacey, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. So let me just first ask, the Washington Post has an extensive piece of reporting on the black vote in America, and it rightly points out that black voters were the responsible for turning Georgia blue, that black voters got Joe Biden elected in many ways. What is your expectation for black voter turnout in this election by Election Day? We know early voting has started. How do you see the numbers? Where do you see the numbers? Go ahead. The numbers are extraordinary. We have seen black men participate at 91.8 percent of their 2020 general election turnout. We have seen black women participate at 90 percent. These are the two highest concentrations of voters. And let's be clear, they are participating despite the impediments of SB202, despite the racially charged voter challenges authorized by SB202, despite the barriers to using absentee ballots, which black voters used in abundance in 2018 and 21 until the time was truncated and the process made more complicated. They are doing this despite hurdles and barriers because they know how vital this election is. And it is deeply disingenuous, if not simply tone deaf, for a secretary of state or governor to dismiss the difficulties black and brown voters have in the state simply because they haven't experienced it themselves. And what we are so excited about is despite the difficulties that have been put in place by this governor and this secretary of state, black voters are showing up and, as we like to say, showing out. Yes. And when you talk about the dismissals on the part of the governor, we know that Brad Raffensperger, the Republican secretary of state, has dismissed the claims that somehow SB202 made it difficult for black folks to vote because witness the turnout. You're saying here that the turnout is despite the hurdles that very much remain in place in the state of Georgia. Do you think that in some ways it galvanized black voters, or do you think that it, that's a function of just the stakes and the candidates and everything else that's going on in terms of American democracy? I think it's all of the above. There could not be a clear contrast between me and my opponent, between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. I believe in a woman's right to choose, as does Raphael Warnock. Herschel Walker, Brian Kemp will strip women of those rights, even though they believe that some of they, they are hypocrites on this issue. Raphael Warnock and I believe in access to health care for half a million Georgians who are being denied that access right now. Brian Kemp oversaw the shutdown of six hospitals, including a level one trauma center on Tuesday, which means Atlanta, the metro area, has one level one trauma center. By contrast, Charleston, South Carolina has three. Atlanta has one. And the population of Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, is larger than the population of the state of South Carolina. We know that this is about our future, especially our right to survive. And black voters understand this at a visceral level. And they are turning out, because we've talked about this for the past two years, that the only way to defeat voter suppression is with voter turnout. And they are showing up and making that so.